Good morning and welcome everyone. Beautiful day that we have for confirmation. It's a blessing that all of you are here today for this uh, special event. A uh, couple of uh, special announcements for you. Um, each year, Armed Forces Weekend, we do a mission project, Military Bible Sticks. So there's a little bit of information in your bulletin about that. We will be doing that again uh, this year. Um, so you'll have more information as time goes on. Uh, second, Vacation Bible School is only a couple of months away, so information has been put up in the Narthex area, and I'd like to invite you to take a look at that. Uh, there should be a sign-up sheet and some various information back there for you. Um, and last, today is Confirmation Sunday, as I mentioned. So we've got uh, the kids' names in the bulletin, and this is a special day for you. This is very exciting, at least I, I hope. You, you excited? Well, all right, well, we got one thumbs up. This is good. When we get to the rite of confirmation, uh, we will be using the rite that is in the hymnal. So if you want to follow along, you can open your hymnal up uh, at that point. I will announce where that is at uh, for the service. Our worship service for today is Divine Service Setting 4. It'll be on the screen, or if you prefer to use the hymnal, please turn to page 203. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, to call upon him in prayer and praise, and to receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, in the fellowship of the altar, let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ, and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you are the giver of all that is good. By your holy inspiration, grant that we may think those things that are right, and by your merciful guiding, accomplish them. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Be seated, please. Good morning. Our first reading comes to us from Acts 10. Then Peter replied, I see very clearly that God shows no favoritism. In every nation he accepts those who fear him and do what is right. This is the message of good news for the people of Israel, that there is peace with God through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. You know what happened throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after John began preaching his message of baptism, and you know that God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. Then Jesus went around doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. And we apostles are witnesses of all he did throughout Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a cross, but God raised him to life on the third day. Then God allowed him to appear, not to the general public, but to us whom God had chosen in advance to be his witnesses. 
We were those who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. And he ordered us to preach everywhere and to testify that Jesus is the one appointed by God to be the judge of all, the living and the dead. He is the one all the prophets testified about, saying that everyone who believes in him will have their sins forgiven through his name. Even Peter was saying these things. The Holy Spirit fell upon all who were listening to the message. The Jews, Jewish believes, who, believers who came with Peter were amazed that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out on the Gentiles too. For they heard them speaking in other tongues and praising God. Then Peter asked, Can anyone object to their being baptized now that they have received the Holy Spirit just as we did? So he gave orders for them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Afterward, Cornelius asked him to stay with them for several days. This is the word of the Lord. Our second reading is from 1 John chapter 5. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has become a child of God, and everyone who loves the Father loves his children too. We know we love God's children if we love God and obey his commandments. Loving God means keeping his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome. For every child of God defeats this evil world, and we achieve this victory through our faith. And who can win this battle against the world? Only those who believe that Jesus is the Son of God. And Jesus Christ was revealed as God's Son by his baptism in water and by shedding his blood on the cross, not by water only, but by water and blood. And the Spirit, who is truth, confirms it with his testimony. So we have these three witnesses, the Spirit, the water, and the blood, and all three agree. This is the word of the Lord. Let us all please rise. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 15th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. I have loved you even as the Father has loved me. Remain in my love. When you obey my commandments, you remain in my love, just as I obey my Father's commandments and remain in his love. I have told you these things so that you will be filled with my joy. Yes, your joy will overflow. This is my commandment. Love each other in the same way I have loved you. There is no greater love than to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you slaves because a master doesn't confide in his slaves. Now you are my friends since I have told you everything the Father told me. You didn't choose me. I chose you. I appointed you to go and produce lasting fruit so that the Father will give you whatever you ask for using my name. This is my command, love each other. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And we confess our faith together in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, 
who spoke by the prophets, and I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life for the world to come. Amen. Be seated, please. And with the being confirmation, we will not have a children's message today. During the Easter season, the time between Easter and Pentecost, we are taking a look at several aspects of new life in Christ. Now, to me, faith seems to be an obvious subject, and that is the main part of our subject for today. It seems to be particularly relevant for confirmation, but this is also important for us in everyday life. But faith at times can be challenging to understand. Now, it can be fairly simple when it comes to knowing a person's name. Some people have that as their first name. Well, that's pretty simple. And it can be fairly simple when you say that faith means to believe. The challenge comes when you try to articulate what you believe. The content of what a person believes is very important. Now, people believe all sorts of things in life. Some people believe that the moon landing was staged and didn't really happen. I found that a little surprising the first time I heard that uh, particular story. You see, some people have this concept that you can only believe what you experience in life. Now, we have all of this video recording of what took place. It was even on national TV. But some people will say, I wasn't there and didn't experience it, and you can fake anything. So it was just staged, and it didn't really happen. Hmm. Some people believe that The world came into existence by a random chance occurrence. And some people believe that the world came into existence through a turtle. Okay. There are all sorts of different beliefs out there. People believe in themselves. They believe in sports teams. They believe in their spouse and their coworker. And there is so many more things. I could give all sorts of examples of what various people believe. So I don't want you to get confused by the title for today that says, Everyone Who Believes. That doesn't mean to believe whatever you want. The content or the object of faith is critical. Now, if you happen to take a look in your bulletin at 1 John chapter 5, you will see there's an important word that follows that little phrase, everyone who believes. It's the word that. And you might think, that's not very important. But it actually is. It is a directive word that the content of what is to believe is going to follow. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has become a child of God. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ. Another way to translate that is Messiah. So you, you kind of have to know what is the Christ and what is the Messiah. The Christ, or the Messiah, is the begotten Son who was sent by the Father into this world. This is an important fact about Jesus of Nazareth, that he is the Son of God that was sent into this world for a very important reason. He was sent for us, the song, above all. And Elena, thank you for having that as part of your statement of faith, but also requesting it to be part of our confirmation service. It is out of his love for us that he came into this world to do something very important for us, to go to the cross to die for our sins. But see, it doesn't end just there. The resurrection is very important. That stone was rolled away so that he could come back to life. Actually, he came back to life and he rolled the stone away. 
And he comes to us to give us new life. New life in Christ has begun in you when you are born of God. What is your identity? Do you identify yourself as a child of God? One that has been begotten of God. We all know that in Jesus Christ, we talk about the first, uh, the one and only Son of God. And there is a translation that uses the word begotten, and that's the better translation. That it is begotten. He comes from. We are born. We come from God. We are given new birth. But in this Christian faith, there are lots of pieces and parts. Now, you guys ready for your test here for confirmation? Oh, I love the look on your face, Allison, because I told you you wouldn't have a test today, right? Yay. The six chief parts. You guys all remember the six chief parts. Just their titles. The six chief parts. The first one is the Ten Commandments. The second one is... Oh, really? The Lord's Prayer. The third one is the Apostles' Creed. The fourth one is baptism. You got it right, Justin. The fifth one is confession and absolution. And the last one, what is the one we haven't done yet? No, not confirmation. (laughs) Communion. Communion, Holy Communion. Now, there's a lot of details that we covered in confirmation class. Each one of these is an important piece of our Christian faith. But in each one of these, the central piece is the fact that Jesus is the Christ. You see, if we don't have Jesus as the Christ at the center of each of these six chief parts, they can become something very different than the Christian faith. It is all about Jesus being in the center, not only of the six chief parts, but in the center of our lives. Now, you guys all remember the second article of the Apostles' Creed. We did the Nicene Creed, so ha <laughs> ha. The second article of the Apostles' Creed. I'll help you. The first article is, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. And in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived of the Holy Spirit. Just in case you didn't hear it, they quoted it exact, and you can look it up in the hymnal. These are all nice facts. And it's easy for us to get to a point that we make our Christian faith into an intellectual endeavor. If it stops there, we have fallen short of what God desires. It's not just to know the facts. It's not just to pass the test. It is important for us to believe what Christ has provided for us, what God the Father provides for us in his son, Jesus. This is important for us in our everyday life. Now, some people believe that you can live the Christian faith in isolation. But 1 John chapter 5, verses 1 through 8 makes it clear that faith is indeed personal, that is true, but it also is lived out in relation to God with other believers and with the whole world. Love for Jesus means that you love God the Father. This love for God works a desire in your heart to keep his commandments. The keeping of his commandments isn't a forced matter, but rather it's one that you do out of love. Now, you know how parents have to coerce and threaten children at times to get them to do what they're supposed to do? Okay? That's not the way it's supposed to work. 
My wife and I have our, three of our grandkids for the weekend. And uh, as much as it would be really nice to just simply make a statement and they do it, we also know reality is that's not what happens. I promise you, yeah, we threaten and coerce them at least once or twice. <laughs> My wife said twice a minute. <laughs> But see, the Christian faith is God working something special in our hearts that we see that his commandments are good and holy for us and for our relationships with other people. Why does this not happen? Because there is a conflict or an opposition of wills. Faith in Jesus Christ creates a desire to keep the commandments out of love. It is a love for God, but also a love for people and a love for his world. Now, as you guys all know, people aren't perfect. There's not a one of us is perfect. At times, we all fall short of the glory of God, and we all fall to the temptation of sin. It is through Jesus that you and I and all people can have victory over sin, death, and the devil. Jesus is the one that has won the victory, and it is through his death and resurrection that we can be certain of the forgiveness of our sins and that we can have new life in Christ. You see, the Christian faith isn't a maybe that this might happen. It is a certainty that it is already done, and we believe what God has done for us. This gives power for us to be able to love God, to love his people, and to love this world. However, this power and this victory is only available to those who believe. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has a different view of life and different view of this world. This God, this Christ, gives you the power to battle sin in your life. This gives you the power to overcome sin in your relationship with other people. This gives you a unique power to make this world a better place to live in. We all want a better world. At least I hope we do. We all live in a world that is a bit on the broken side. So this faith that we talk about isn't just any faith. This is a new life that God gives to us, a new life in Christ. God provides his son, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit, and all the other tools for a loving and victorious life. But you do need to believe, and you do need to use the tools that are provided. Now, Elena, I mentioned that you were going to be in the sermon today. And she was like, excited! You mean, Pastor, I get to come up and talk? I will save you from that. She is very long-winded. You think my sermon is long? Oh, my. <laughs> I want to read part of her uh, testament statement of faith. They say a picture is worth a thousand words. For me, there is a song that is worth a thousand thanks. When I hear Above All by Michael W. Smith, it is completely clear why I love Jesus. Its message is so clear that above all else, he lived, died, and rose again for me. Above all powers or nature or creation or wisdom, all the ways of man, kingdoms, thrones, wonders ever known, wealth and treasures of the earth, there is no way to measure his worth. Yet he lived on the earth so that he could die on the earth. And he did that for me and for you. And it goes on from there. But there's one simple reason. Because of love. He loves each and every one of us with that kind of love. And he calls us to love one another with that same kind of love. Yes, it is a great challenge. As a matter of fact, I mentioned last week that this is something that's beyond our human ability. We need Christ in our heart 
the Spirit in our heart to empower us to love like this and to have a faith to trust that we can act in ways that don't make sense to the rest of the world. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ, you have been born of God. You have this identity as a child of God, and you have the power to do this, to rise above, and to show everybody how much God loves you in Jesus Christ. In his name, amen. Now may the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Please be seated. And confirmands, if you would please come forward. If you would like to follow along with the rite of confirmation, it's on page 272. Now, before we begin the rite of confirmation, I've got to tell a quick story on the confirmands. This is uh, just to show you a little bit of the, uh, what I've had to deal with. So their challenge to me for today was to try to figure out a way that I would work waffles into the sermon. And I figured somebody would laugh on that one, right? So they would pick these particular words and just say, Pastor, can you do it? I don't think you will do it. It's a challenge, right? So one week, they pulled out the word spam. So they would do these things just to see what I could do. We had a lot of fun, though, didn't we? Yeah? You guys are so stiff today. What's up? Let us begin the rite of confirmation. Beloved in the Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ said to his apostles, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey, to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. You have been baptized and catechized in the Christian faith according to our Lord's bidding. Jesus said, Whoever confesses me before men, I will also confess before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. Lift up your hearts, therefore, to the God of all grace, and joyfully give answer to what I now ask you in the name of the Lord. Do you this day, in the presence of God and this congregation, acknowledge the gifts God gave you in your baptism? Yes, I do. Do you renounce the devil? Yes, I renounce him. Do you renounce all his works? Yes, I renounce them. Do you renounce all his ways? Do you believe in God the Father Almighty? Yes, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord? Yes, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? Yes, I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the Lamb. Do you hold all the prophetic and apostolic scriptures to be the inspired word of God? I do. Do you confess the doctrine of the Evangelical Lutheran Church drawn from the scriptures, as you have learned to know it from the small catechism, to be faithful and true? Do you intend to hear the word of God and to receive the Lord's Supper faithfully? I do, by the grace of God. Do you intend to live according to the word of God and in faith, word, and deed to remain true to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, even to death? I do, by the grace of God. 
Do you intend to continue steadfast in the confession and church and to suffer all, even death, rather than fall away from it? I do, by the grace of God. We rejoice with thankful hearts that you have been baptized and have received the teaching of the Lord. You have confessed the faith and have been absolved of your sins. As you continue to hear the Lord's word and to receive his blessed sacrament, he who has begun a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Please kneel. Cassie the Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and the Spirit and has forgiven you all of your sins, may he strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. And receive your confirmation verse. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Elena, the Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water in the Spirit and has forgiven you all of your sins, may he strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. Receive your confirmation verse from Joshua 1.9. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be terrified. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you are you go. Justin, the Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and the Spirit and has forgiven you all of your sins, may he strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. Receive your confirmation, verse Romans eight twenty eight. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. Allison, the almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and the Spirit and has forgiven you all of your sins, may he strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. Receive your confirmation, verse of Revelation 2.10. Be faithful, even to the point of death, and I will give you the crown of life. Zach, the almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water in the Spirit and has forgiven you all of your sins. May he strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. And receive your confirmation verse of Psalm 46, 1. God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for your great goodness in bringing these, your sons and daughters, to the knowledge of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, in enabling them both with the heart to believe and with the mouth to confess his saving name. Grant that, bringing forth the fruits of faith, they may continue steadfast and victorious to the day when all who have fought the good fight of faith shall receive the crown of of righteousness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Peace be with you. Amen. We continue with our prayer of the church. Um, let us all please rise. Let us pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, 
Because of your tender love toward us sinners, you have given us your Son, that believing in him we might have eternal life. Continue to grant us your Holy Spirit that we may remain steadfast in this faith to the end and finally come to life everlasting. And Lord, we lift up to you those that we have in our hearts and minds today that are struggling with health difficulties. And Lord, we lift up to you this congregation and all of the mission and ministry work that we are involved in, especially our preschool, our youth ministries, and so much more. Help us, Lord, that we be able to find those ways that we can connect with people and have that opportunity to share the good news of God's love in Jesus Christ. Be with us, Lord, to help us to be able to show that love to others in the way that we treat them, that we show them about the love of Jesus Christ and how he was willing to sacrifice for us. We pray all of this and whatever else we have in our hearts this day as we pray together the prayer our Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.